All right, so now moving on to um, lesson 6.2 of Algebra 2A, credit three. And this is multiplying polynomials. So we are on page 29, problem number one, a little past the middle of the page, and it is this. So we have three plus two X and times four minus seven X plus five X squared. All right, so when we're multiplying polynomials, we have to multiply uh, everything in this parentheses times everything in this parentheses, which sounds like confusing and maybe a lot, but it's actually pretty easy if you do it in a streamlined way. So what we're going to do is multiply this 3 to everything in the second parentheses. So we've got 3 times 4, 3 times a negative 7x, and then 3 times 5x squared. So that is done. And we'll simplify those in a second. But now, before we do that, though, we have to multiply 2x to everything in the second parentheses. So just like we multiplied the 3, uh, we have 2x times 4, 2x times a negative 7x, and then 2x times 5x squared. So I'm a little far away to point to those, but again, 2x times 4, uh, there it is, 2x times negative 7x, and 2x times the 5x squared. All right. So now we need to multiply this, and then we're going to combine like terms, and we'll be done. So 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21x. 3 times 5 is 15x squared. 2 times 4 is 8x. 2x times negative 7x is negative 14x squared. And again, remember, when there's no exponents, we put those 1s there. So that's how we get the x squared. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then same thing here, we put the 1, and we're going to get 2 times 5 is 10, and then x to the third, because 1 plus 2 is 3. All right, now we're going to combine like terms and put this in order, or really the correct term would be standard form, which means, uh, just like we did before in the previous lesson with adding and subtracting, we're going to put the highest degree, the biggest exponent first. So that's the 10x to the third, so we got 10x to the third. And then next is the x squares. And let's just see if we can combine these as we go. So we're going to have to write the whole thing again. So with the x squares, we've got 15 minus 14 is 1x squared, or just x squared. And then with the x's, we have negative 21 plus 8. So negative 21 plus 8 is negative 13x. And then the only thing left is the constant term, which would be the 12. And so there you go. You have 10x to the third plus uh, x squared minus 13x, and then plus 12. I'm just checking. There's a little mistake in the answer key there, but that is just double checking. Yeah, that's the answer key. All right, so we're good. Okay, so let's go ahead and try number two. So number two on the same page, uh, a little more multiplying uh, in a... Well, kind of almost a similar type of situation. We got x minus six, <coughs> excuse me, uh, times negative four x squared minus eight x, and then plus three. All right. So same thing here. We have to multiply both the x and the negative six to everything over here. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and draw the arrows. And now I like to say I do that as much for me. It helps me keep things organized as I do for for you guys. Um, because it just, again, it's a visual that helps keep things straight. All right, so we have x times negative 4x squared, x times negative 8x, and then x times 3. All right, so that's the x's, and just like that, we're done with the x. Now, negative 6 to everything. Whoop, 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 whoop. Drawing's a little bit off there. There we go. All right, so negative 6 times negative 4x squared. Negative 6 times negative 8x, and negative 6 times positive 3. All right, let's go ahead and multiply these. Uh, again, let's put in those, one, those coefficients and those exponents to remind us. So 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. 1 plus 2 is 3, so negative 4x to the third. Same thing here. Let's put in the coefficient and the exponent. 1 times negative 8, negative 8. 1 and 1 is 2, so negative 8x squared x times 3 is just 3x. And then negative 6, now careful, negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24x squared. 
negative 6 times negative 8. Negative times a negative is a positive. 6 times 8, 48x. Don't forget the x. And negative 6 times 3, negative 18. Okay, so now let's combine our like terms. The only x to the third term is negative 4x to the third, so we've got that. And then next would be the x squared. So we've got negative 8 plus 24. Right, maybe, let's show you one. We'll just do the grouping again, just to, in case anyone's not quite comfortable just combining them like that. So let's go ahead and write it out like that. So we'll group them, and then we'll combine them. And then the x's, we've got the 3 and the 48. And then the only thing left is the constant term. There's only one of those. So we'll just bring that down. And then our final answer, we've got negative 4x to the third. And then here we've got negative 8 plus 24, which is a positive 16x squared. Here we have 3 plus 48, which is 51x. And then just bring down that minus 18. So we have negative 4x to the third plus 16x squared plus 51x minus 18, and that checks out. All right, so that is that. All right, so actually just one more problem, because uh, it's kind of the same idea, not a lot we need to go over, but again, we're going to take what we're doing and put it in the context of a word problem. And this is found in about the middle of page 30, and this is problem number one. It says, a biologist has found that the number of branches on a certain rare tree can be modeled by the polynomial b of y equals 4y squared plus y, where y is the number of years after the tree reaches a height of 6 feet. The number of leaves on each branch can be modeled by L of y equals 2y to the third plus 3y squared plus y. Write a polynomial describing the total number of leaves on a tree. That's kind of interesting. You ever wonder? Maybe not. You look a big, at a big tree and just, there must be hundreds or thousands or maybe even tens of thousands of leaves depending on the type of tree. Well, whether or not you wondered or not, this is how we do it. So uh, the branches is B of Y, and each branch has a certain number of leaves, which was L of Y. And so if we multiply the number of branches by the number of leaves on each branch, we're going to get the total number of leaves. In this case, just as a polynomial expression. So B of Y was the 4Y squared plus Y, and then times L of Y, which was the 2y to the third plus 3y squared plus y. I know this seems a little weird, you know, they don't give you exact numbers, um, but at this point, we're just, they're just creating kind of a word problem just to uh, try and put a, a multiplying problem in the context of a word problem. All right, so let's go ahead and do that same thing. We're going to multiply the 4y squared to everything in the parentheses. So 4y squared times 2y to the third. 4y squared times 3y to the second, and 4y squared times y. All right, so just like that, we're done distributing and multiplying the 4y squared. Now the y. So we got y times 2y to the third, y times 3y to the second, and y times y. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply these out here. 4 times 2 is 8, and then add the exponents, 2 plus 3 is 5, so we've got 8y to the fifth. 4 times 3 is 12, add up the exponents, 2 plus 2 is 4. And then when we don't have a coefficient or, or an exponent, put in the 1s, because uh, I say it's often an issue. If you don't put in the 1s, we a mistake if somehow some kind is made. 4 times 1 is 4, and we add up the exponents, 2 plus 1 is 3. Put in the... 1's here, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 plus 3 is 4. Put the 1's here, 1 times 3 is 3, 1 plus 2 is 3. And then here, there's nothing, so put in all the 1's, coefficients and exponents. 1 times 1 is 1, so we don't need to write that. And then add up the exponents, 1 plus 1 is 2, so we've got y squared. Okay, so let's go ahead, and we'll, I think we'll group them again, just so we get used to, um, just so we're, everyone's comfortable. So y to the fifth, the only y to the fifth is the first term, so we'll just bring that down. Uh, y to the fourth, make sure everything's on the screen there. Uh, we've got 12 and 2, so we've got 12y to the fourth plus 2y to the fourth. So we group those. 
and we can cross those out. Y to the third, we've got four and three is seven. Oh, whoops, I'm kind of giving away the answer here. So four plus three. And then finally, the only thing left is this y squared. That's the only y squared. So just like the y to the eight y to the fifth, we just bring that down. All right, so combining uh, like terms. Well, first of all, I'll just bring down the eight y to the fifth. 12 plus two is 14 y to the fourth. Four plus three, yep, we said it already, it's seven. So seven y to the third, and then bring down the y squared. So we end up with eight y to the fifth plus 14 y to the fourth plus seven y to the third plus y squared. All right, so that is that. That is the uh, end of multiplying. The homework that you have is on page, uh, homework and lesson checkpoint, pages 31 and 32. And uh, that is multiplying polynomials. Uh, do your best with that. Just making sure everything got in. Uh, do your best and ask questions, and we'll see you in the next lesson, which is lesson actually uh, 6.4. Uh, so we'll see you in, in the next lesson. Good luck with that.